In this video, I'm going to walk you through all the settings and features of your Osmo Action 3. By the end, you'll know your camera inside and out. If there's a specific question or feature you're looking for, I put time codes in the description. Let's get started. I'll start by going over the physical features of the Osmo Action 3. This is the shutter button. You press it once to take a photo and to stop and start recording. You press and hold the shutter to use the snapshot feature. I'll explain what that is when I go through the settings. The front touchscreen gives you full access to all the settings and shooting modes. The lens cover can be easily removed if you need to replace it or use an ND filter. This rubber piece helps protect the lens. It is also removable and in fact DJI includes a spare in the box. There are two LED status lights, one on the front and the other is on the rear. The Osmo Action 3 has a total of three microphones, two on the front, one on the left side of the A in action, and the other on the left side of the 3. The third microphone is windproof and located on the bottom of the camera. The O in action is actually a color temperature photo sensor. I think that's a pretty slick design. The USB-C port is located on the right side of the camera. Having the charging port on the opposite side of the battery and SD card makes a lot of sense to me. On the GoPro, the USB port is on the same side as the battery and SD card, so they are exposed if you have to charge the camera or use a power bank for extended recording. Right above the USB port is the quick switch slash power button. You long press the button to turn the camera on. On top above the lens is the speaker. The rear touchscreen is where we'll be accessing all the menus, settings, and shot modes. The battery and the micro SD card slot are located on the left side of the camera. On the bottom of the camera are the quick release slots. The Osmo Action 3 uses a magnetic quick release system similar to the Action 2. The quick release adapter mount is included with the camera. The adapter clicks into the slots on the bottom of the camera for a super secure connection. The flat adhesive base also comes with the camera. Be careful where you place it though because it is secured using 3M adhesive. If you get the standard combo, you also get one locking screw. The screw is used to secure the quick release adapter to whatever mount you are using. The horizontal vertical protective frame is used if you want to shoot vertical video. Place the camera in the frame, mount it horizontally. When you're ready to shoot a vertical video, you flip the frame around and you're all set. The first thing you'll need to do when you get your camera is insert the SD card and battery. Before turning on the camera, you want to download the DJI MIMO app on your iOS or Android device. You need the app to make sure your camera has the latest firmware. It downloads automatically and installs once you connect the camera to your phone. Your camera should be ready to go. To start and stop recording, press the shutter button. One of the features I use the most is Snapshot. When the camera is off, press the shutter button and the camera automatically starts recording. When you press the shutter button to stop recording, the camera automatically turns off. Now let's go through how to navigate the touchscreen. You can swipe up, swipe down, tap, and swipe left and right. Some key information is displayed on the touchscreen. In the upper left corner is the remaining storage capacity on the micro SD card. This is the playback icon to see the photos and videos you've already recorded. This is the current shooting mode you're in. Press it to switch between all the modes. This is the current battery level. Here is the parameters icon to adjust image and audio parameters. This is the zoom icon. 
This is the current aspect ratio if you're in photo mode. If you're in video mode, it will display the resolution, frame rate, and stabilization setting. Swipe down to access the control menu. The first icon on the top left is the custom mode. If you have photo or video settings you use regularly, you can save the settings in a custom mode. You can save up to five. For example, let's say you want to have motion blur in your video. You set the frame rate to 24 frames per second and set the shutter speed to 1 over 50. To get the best image quality, set the ISO to 100. And of course, you also want to color grade the footage. So you select decent alike 10 bit color, swipe down, select custom mode and confirm and you're all set. QS stands for quick switch. You can select which modes come up when you press the quick switch button. If there are a few modes you use all the time, select them here and you can easily access them. You can also assign your custom mode to a quick switch slot. This is where you adjust the screen brightness. If you're outside on a sunny day, you'll want to increase it quite a bit. Up in the top right corner is the settings icon. We'll go through all these in a minute. In the lower left corner is the orientation lock icon. If you turn it on, the screen orientation is locked either horizontally or vertically. If you turn it off, the orientation changes based on the position of the camera. If you're shooting vertical video, you want to lock it vertically. The lock icon locks the screen so you can't accidentally touch the screen and change something. You swipe up to unlock the screen. The face icon turns the voice control on and off. There are a handful of commands that it understands. I'll show you all those in the settings, but let's see how good it is. Start recording. Stop recording. Stop recording. Take photo. Shut down. Oh, that's not too bad. Last but not least is the full front screen icon. If you turn it on, the image on the front screen takes up the full screen. If you turn it off, there are black bars on the top and the bottom. Now we'll go through each of the settings items starting with snapshot. Earlier in the video, I demonstrated the snapshot feature. When the camera is off, you can press the shutter button and the camera will automatically start recording and automatically turn off when you stop recording. Here you can change it so the snapshot automatically records an HDR video or a hyperlapse instead. When single screen preview is enabled, only one touchscreen will turn on. If the front screen is on, that means the rear screen will be locked and vice versa. Here is where you can change the voice control language and find the available voice commands. In scuba mode, the shutter button can only be used to take photos or start recording. You have to press the quick switch button to start and stop recording. The scuba diving mode is automatically enabled when the camera is more than 14 meters underwater. Press the quick switch button five times to disable the scuba diving mode. The OTG connection allows Android users to connect the device directly to the camera via the type C cable files can be transferred from the camera to your Android device. The wireless connection setting allows you to select your Wi-Fi frequency and reset the Wi-Fi connection. Wi-Fi is used to connect the camera to the DJI MIMO wirelessly to update the firmware. Video compression allows you to switch the video encoding format between compatibility and efficiency modes. 
if compatibility is selected, videos will be encoded to H.264 with higher compatibility. If efficiency is selected, videos will be encoded in HEVC with a smaller video file. The volume can be adjusted to high, medium, low, or mute. You can add horizontal and vertical lines to the camera view to help level the camera. You can also add diagonal lines or have both. Anti-flicker reduces the flicker caused by fluorescent lights or a TV screen when shooting indoors. When set the time code, the camera can be synced by the system settings. Naming management allows you to change the name of the storage files and folders. I find that changing the name to something shorter can make it easier to organize my footage when I am using multiple cameras. Screen off when recording sets the amount of time before the screen turns off during recording. It doesn't affect the recording though. Auto power off sets the time the camera will turn off after recording has stopped. This button turns the LED status lights on or off. There are two status lights, one in the front, the other is in the rear. When the light is solid green, that means the camera is ready to use. The light goes off temporarily when you take a photo. It blinks green when the camera is charging. It blinks red and green when the firmware is being updated. A slow blinking red light means the camera is recording. When the camera is powering off, it blinks red three times rapidly. If the light is off, that means there's a problem with the mini micro SD card. Tap here to calibrate the horizon if necessary. Continue last live stream allows the camera to continue the last live stream after it has stopped. You can set the language to English, Simplify Chinese, Traditional Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Thai, German, Spanish, French, Italian, Russian, Brazilian Portuguese, Turkish, Indonesian, or Polish. You can manually set the date and time. You can reformat the micro SD card, but beware that will erase all the data. You can delete all the current settings by restoring the camera back to its original factory settings. Device info is where you'll find your device name, serial number, firmware version, quick start guide, and export log. Compliance info is just a whole lot of legal mumbo jumbo. Now we can get into the fun stuff, all the shooting modes. We'll start with photo mode. Swipe up to set the aspect ratio and countdown timer. Generally, you want to shoot in 16 by 9. The countdown timer sets how much time you have before the camera takes a photo after you press the shutter button. Tap the 1 in the lower right hand corner to adjust the 4 times digital zoom. Tap the parameter icon to adjust the camera image settings. In the basic mode, you can only change the field of view from standard, the equivalent of a 14mm focal length, to wide, the equivalent of a 9mm focal length. Tap the Pro icon to enable Pro mode for more adjustment options. Here you can change the exposure from Auto to Manual. Set the ISO to a limited range or a fixed value. Change the shutter speed. You can also adjust the EV value, but only if the ISO is set to a range, not a fixed value. The white balance can be set to automatic or adjust it manually. The field of view is still limited to standard or wide. You have the choice between JPEG and RAW file formats. That's all the photo parameter settings. Go back to the camera view and tap the playback icon to see your photos and videos. Tap the mode icon and swipe left to get to video mode. Swipe up to set the resolution and aspect ratio. In 
video mode, you can set the frame rate from 24 to 120 frames per second. In the upper right corner is the stabilization icon. At 2.7K 16 by 9 aspect ratio, all the stabilization modes are available. Rocksteady, Rocksteady Plus, Horizon Balancing, and Horizon Steady. Horizon Steady isn't available at 4K resolution. Horizon Balance is available in 4K, but only up to 60 frames per second. Horizon Balancing and Horizon Steady are both really cool features. Horizon Balancing keeps the horizon straight when the camera is tilted up to 45 degrees. Horizon Steady keeps the horizon straight even if the camera is rotated 360 degrees. In loop recording mode, the camera records by overriding old footage with new footage at a selected interval. You want to use loop recording when you're trying to capture a spontaneous moment. It allows the camera to keep recording while saving space on the micro SD card. The 4x digital zoom is available in video mode. Tap parameters to see the basic and pro options. In basic mode, you can adjust the field of view from narrow to ultra wide. The narrow field of view is the equivalent of a 26 mm focal length, but you have to be at 2.7K 16 by 9 aspect ratio for the narrow field of view option. In 4K, you get the standard field of view, a 15 mm focal length equivalent, the wide field of view, an 11 mm equivalent focal length, and ultra wide at 10 mm equivalent focal length. Enabling EIS priority in low light removes motion blur in low light situations but may affect the image quality. Enabling enhanced image quality allows the camera to record more highlights and shadow details. Tap the pro icon to see the available advanced video settings. The exposure is fully adjustable, the shutter speed, the ISO, the EV, or you can just go full automatic. There are two color profile options, normal and decent like 10 bit color. The 10 bit image will look flat and is meant for people who do post-production color corrections and grading. 10 bit color is a big deal if you do post-production on your photos and videos, but not so much if you're not into that. Let me know which feature do you like the most on the Osmo Action 3. The field of view options are the same as in basic mode and the enhanced image quality feature is also available. It's hard to see, but grayed out next to the pro icon is a mic icon. This is where you can adjust your audio settings. You can select stereo or mono, wind reduction on or off, directional audio. When directional audio is on, it enhances the reception of the sound in front of the camera. I'm going to continue to bring you the latest action camera news, reviews, and how-tos. Make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss a thing. Next is HDR video. You want to use this video mode when it's bright outside. Swipe up and you'll see a difference between the standard video mode and HDR video. You can't select between the 4x3 and 16x9 aspect ratios, and the frame rate is limited to 24 to 30 frames per second. If you drop the resolution down to 2.7K, all the stabilization modes are available in HDR video. Loop recording can be enabled. In basic mode, you can only adjust the field of view and the narrow field of view is not available. In pro mode, there are no other color profile options or enhanced image quality. There is also no manual exposure. You can only adjust the EV. But you can still manually adjust the white balance if necessary. All the audio settings are available as well. The next shooting mode is slow motion. Swipe up and you can record in 1080p, 2.7K and 4K at four times speed. If you want to lower the resolution down to 1080p, you can record at eight times speed. The four times digital zoom isn't available. In basic mode, you can only adjust the field of view and the narrow and ultra wide fields of view aren't available. In pro mode, you can adjust the exposure manually or set it to auto. The white balance can also be adjusted. The two color profiles of normal 
and decent and light 10 bit are available. However, the enhanced image quality setting is not available. Also, there are no audio settings. The next mode is time lapse. Swipe up in the first mode is hyperlapse. You can adjust the speed of the hyperlapse as well as the resolution. The digital zoom isn't available. In basic mode, you can adjust the field of view, but the narrow field of view isn't available. Enabling EIS priority in low light will remove motion blur and disable the anti-flicker functions. In pro mode, you can fully adjust the exposure manually or keep it at auto. The normal and decent alike 10 bit color profiles are available. The enhanced image quality setting isn't. All the audio settings can also be adjusted in hyperlapse mode. Swipe to the left to access the time lapse modes. There are three presets and the ability to customize the shot interval and recording duration. The video duration is how long your video clip will be based on the shot interval and recording length. The resolution can be set to 1080p, 2.7K or 4K. The moon icon in the upper right hand corner enables low power mode while the camera is shooting the time lapse. When it's enabled, the camera is in low power mode except when it is capturing an image to reduce power consumption and allow for longer recording times. Standard and wide are the only field of view options. The exposure and white balance can be adjusted manually or set to auto. The formatting options are video, video and JPEG, and video and RAW. If you select JPEG or RAW, the individual photos are saved in addition to a video. The photos can be exported to a program like Final Cut Pro and edited separately, giving you more control of the look of the final time lapse. The audio menu isn't available in time lapse mode. That's all the camera settings and modes, but we're not done yet. You also need to be familiar with the DJI MIMO app. You need the app to stay current with the firmware updates at a minimum. The camera should connect automatically, but you can also tap the device icon to connect to the app. In the Academy page, you'll find camera guides and tutorials. With the AI editor, you can quickly turn several video clips into short videos. Let's try it out. I'm just going to pick the top six videos that are saved in the downloads and see what it creates. Music is playing right now, but it's muted. I want to avoid any potential copyright claim issues, but the video is cutting to the music. That actually wasn't too bad. If you don't want an AI creating your videos, you can also select a template and create your own. You can also connect to your camera using the app. All the modes and settings we just went through can all be accessed in there. To learn more about the Osmo Action 3, check out this video.